Drive on lug nuts. Play on my tangers. Nothing left to do but to crank over those engines, gearheads, because tis none other than us, the Lug Nuts Podcast. Ah, oh, welcome everyone. Recorded for February 2024. Ford takes a tour. On a Honda. Toyota warns. Buick. Still a company. Hyundai. Stellantis. And more. Thank you for joining us. Drive on we want you to drive on right over here to facebook.com backslash lug nuts podcast that's where you're going to find every single lug nuts podcast conveniently in a playlist for you and as all of our great content coming in the future a lot like this first story the american muscle car is coming to europe uh they have did a few changes, uh, slender headlights, aggressive grill, and a revised color palette with three new colors just for Europe. Ember blue, vapor blue, and squash yellow. I like it. I like it. Um, I like the squashed headlights here that we see behind my head. Uh, I, I think they're, that adds to the car. They're, uh, they're neat. Uh, the convertible has a fully insulated roof, which can be raised and lowered in eight seconds, and can still fit two golf bags in the trunk. No shit. That's actually pretty good. 12.4 inch digital instrument uh, display, 13.2 infotainment, V8 pumping out 440 horsepower, and yeah. 389 torques. Ah, the engine is Six isn't dead. speed manual or 10 speed automatic. I like it. Or if that's not enough, you could have the Dark Horse upgraded to five liter V8 with 447 horsepower and 398 Classic chassis tuning, large anti-roll bar, heavy-duty front dampeners, uh, front strut tower, brace. Uh, get all sorts you could be all stuff. supported up with this thing, man. Jesus, it is ready for a crash, and it has the horsepower to get you there. You could also get auxiliary engine cooler and a lightweight radiator and a rear axle cooler. Rear axles are too hot. 59.9 in Germany. 86 in Australia. I do like how Ford is very popular overseas. I really appreciate that fact. You know, like, eh, you know, they're still popular. I mean, it's still like, you know, uh, last I looked at the charts, it's like Toyota, Ford, Tesla. Well, they, they've abandoned all cars and people still like cars. Yeah. They're great. Podcast I mean, about it. This is a good car. It's like the last one they produced. This is it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The Mustang and uh, <laughs> nothing. Not, nothing. You're done. That's Just it. SUVs. <laughs> but you know, the future holds many things. Just like it holds this next story. So remember, remember when GM said we're going to go all electric? Yeah. Yeah. Turns out that's really hard. Yeah, it is. I don't I don't know what made them think that because they made the bolt. Like that didn't go well from the very at all beginning. Uh CEO bolt, bolt, nothing went good with it. CEO Marty Barr at the end of January said GM would offer plug-in hybrids in the United States, revising the outlook of only EVs. Mm. Didn't work out for them. It, it is really hard. Yeah. So, but you know, they have plug in hybrids or PHEVs, which is almost longer than saying plug in hybrids. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Combination of a conventional engine and a battery. So, or an ICE, which is an electrical battery powerful. 
which can be, I added this because I thought it was uh, uh, frequently driven emission free. Not always. Frequently. Frequently. Okay. I like that little. Uh, you know, I'm not here all the time, there. but, you know, I frequently pop in. Frequently popping in yeah. with emissions free. I guess if you can't go the full Monty, which, you know, uh, hybrids are really the only way to charge everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, that's all those batteries we've mentioned. In the past. Uh, yeah, that that's the answer <coughs> for a lot. Like we see, like some companies, uh, they announce like, you know what, we're going to go more towards hybrids. Others are saying, you know what, uh, hydrogen is not a bad idea. So a mm -hmm. lot of people are really figuring out that all EV market is not really a thing right now. The, I think the hybrids. Probably hydrogen in the future. So, uh, oh, yeah. PHEVs are a small player in the U.S. regulatory uh, uh, market, I guess. Mm -hmm. 51% in the last 11 months it has raised uh, 2023. According to SP Global Mobility. Well, I mean, the so thing that's a that, market trend right there. The other there, thing that friends. I heard that really holds up uh, people going to even like Tesla is like the lack of parts because it's impossible to get Tesla parts. So, you know, yeah. it, it, it's it's one of those things where more people are more likely to go EV and a high, well, a hybrid EV rather, rather than a full electric vehicle because mm -hmm. you got like Tesla coming out strong, but still like. How many of these people are like buying Tesla after Tesla because, you know, of weird parts issues or some fucking totaling thing? You know, Trying EV to. market's really weird. So I feel a lot of people are looking at different options. Well, it's all that glitters is not gold. They're, according to consumer reports, uh, saying that they have more than double the problems of internal combustion. I believe that, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a, there's it's a, rough a lot of swallow. problems connecting the parts, I guess. Mm -hmm. Big battery could be fire sometimes. Yeah, and then you have that lithium problem. Um, I, I mentioned that one thing I saw before the podcast of like China trying out sodium. But, yeah. you know, still, I don't, I don't really think... There's that's like the I, I love, end all be all. I love because, hearing that they're trying new yeah. stuff. But, uh, you know, you still have to improve that grid. If everybody can't charge their car whenever they want, it's not an answer to fuel. Yeah, no, it's, it's not really. It sounds nice. Sounds mm -hmm. nice on paper, but it does. Uh, but we can expect the Chevy Silverado, the GM Sierra, full size up out late 2026 probably mm -hmm. also hybrid nice yeah. they're trying they're trying we're yeah. trying and we can try this next story honda made the most honda statement ever how honda honda would like to make the best seller they they could be uh they would like to make affordable electrics okay and they're sort of sticking with Backing oh, out yeah. because oh board. Well, you know, if everybody else car, is backing out, you once know. you buy the car, charging it is your problem. So <laughs> uh Honda is set to expand its lineup with a a replacement for the Civic. Uh they're having two new concepts. One is this. If you scroll down, there's a side view of the shuttlecraft mm -hmm. Honda or whatever. Just as dark, it. too. I like it. Yeah, it's a very dark photo with big old. It looks like it came from the future. <laughs> At least there's no zebra print. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. all right, but here's a black car. Good luck. Uh, yeah, there's also another uh, one below that we've seen before. We've seen this little one. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this red. is the brand's new. They uh, want you to see this. This is this is their new concept of the direction, their design direction. We may not actually see this one. It's just their design. That's design. fine. I'm I'm fine with that. They, they they don't have to put out everything they design. You know, it's it's not a Marvel movie. You don't have to put out every character. 
You can just pick and choose which one you want. It's fine. This was seen at CES earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New flagship concept. Uh, there will be a SUV in 2026. Also electric and progressive. Oh, they're, they're leaning into it. They're leaning into it. This is the... the and uh, they're going to go for a, a sustainable future of EV. They have a really good writer. They got a really good writer. Like now, sustainable EVs. That's where we're going. Affordability and sustainability sounds like Hondas too. It does. It sounds like they hit that tuning fork there, but I don't really think they have. I don't think they know what they're really getting into here because everybody else is backing out. You know, Japan. <laughs> Japan's a little island. A lot of people on it, so there's tons of places to charge. Yeah. Their network is fine, oh, wow. I guess, and set up for it. But right. the rest of us, America is a very big country. Yeah, a lot of roads. Very big oh. country. I mean, I will give you that. They do have. Uh, they got. It's a small. It's a tiny island, you know, comparatively. So maybe electrics will work better off over there because you know they're preparing. Maybe I don't know. I'm I'm not walking the streets of Japan yet. And they, you guys and want it. And they've got Zilla to turn the big crank on the generator. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Got that. But, got to do know. something. Hey, we can look at the same story. The story gets you excited. But uh, shouldn't get too excited. The new rotary, it's one of the rotary concepts that they're working on. So I like the gullwing wing doors. The concept. That uh, rotary engine that will be used to charge the battery and not as like, you know what? Yeah, an engine. Are they still? You think they'll still add in the regenerative braking thing? Because that's kind of popular with hybrids. Yeah, prob probably they'll add that. The I mean, it is rough on the brakes though. Like tw the early Priuses, you got like 30, 20 to thirty thousand miles out of your brake pads, and you had to change those out. That's how you're charging the battery. Is that breaking? <laughs> you know what I mean? They fixed no, it since then. No word yet, but, but they have a new R&D group that's composed of 36 en engineers that will work on the rotary concept. The last time these this type of group that they got together, they produced the exclusive JDM RX-8 Sprinter R. Oh. So they kind of know what they're doing. Oh, uh, okay. Tokyo Auto Salon last month, president uh, of Mazda, it's the uh, it is Shuru Moro, Katsurio Moro, hinted that this this Katsuhiro, sorry, Katsuhiro Moro, Katsuhiro Moto hinted that the Sprinter. Could be the successor to the seven or the eight. Ooh, that's exciting! Got a brand new RX seven or RX eight, so they can't because yeah. the rotary would you'd be able to continually charge the battery. Mm -hmm. If they can get those batteries light enough, yeah, yeah. Hey, they look into sodium. Maybe there you go. Sodium's light salt. So, uh, the rotary engine will only be used, they could use two rotary engines, but both just to charge the battery. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad they're putting it in something. Yeah, you know, it's not dying. It's still there. It's just and there to charge, you know. <laughs> especially if they can just be converted to hydrogen. It makes, mm -hmm. you know, you're now your favorite battery-powered sports car will still be insanely expensive when you need to get a new battery. Yeah, but I mean, you still have. But until that point, you still have it. You're golden. Yeah. At least You're, you don't have to charge it. Yeah. So let's let's go to the next story so we can talk about this. So Toyota warns fifty thousand older vehicles could be an immediate threat because you're driving with a grenade in front of your face. I mean, you Japanese automaker has a do not drive 2003 to 2004 Corolla, 2000. Thank God it's not a popular three car. Three to four Corolla Matrix, Rev 4, 4 to 5, because Takata airbag inflators. You didn't take care of that? More yet? than 30 deaths worldwide, Jeez. including 26 deaths 
in the United States alone. Uh, yeah, Hundreds that, yeah. of injuries not spoken of. The 2000, uh, these are the same problems that happen with the 2009. You're driving with a hand grenade in the first place. So, like, I mean, you, you, you know what happened to all the other Takata airbags. You didn't do, like, a, f like a blanket, hey, let's get these out of here thing. I missed know? them. I just think that's a little bit ridiculous. Just to remind you, it could explode and unleash shrapnel metal into the interior of your car, not only killing you, but all the occupants. You so know, please don't drive these things. I had that. Get them fixed. I had that tone. accord and I hit the tree because I, I slid on black ice. And it was, it, 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 it wasn't until like, you know, probably like, like a year later after I had, had already car was totaled because the tree won but they do yes <laughs> and it, it, the tree's still there too living good living its best life so a year later i get a, a thing in the mail saying hey your car your accord was affected by the takata airbag and meanwhile when i hit that tree that airbag went off in my face so i could have had shrapnel in my head and i don't know you would have you guys would have gotten a piece of the lawsuit or something i don't know but it didn't happen, but you know, I was a lucky, uh, unlucky tester of that airbag. So just don't drive your car if you're affected. You really threw some sunshine down on that. Yeah, one. don't 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 drive your car. <laughs> don't hit anything. It was probably a different airbag in that one. Oh yeah, yeah. But just be safe. Just don't drive it. Get rid of that goddamn car. Let's let's go see what the Germans are doing. The Germans are partnering with the the Salyu Systems. BMW is embarking on a long-term strategic partnership to develop the F BMW Group's future engineering platform for all of its 3D experiences in the future. Okay. For its fundamental core program. For uh, the 3D stuff on the inside, I assume. Like, inside. I guess, on the screen? Yeah, and... that's what I assume. Fundamental role in designing the whole experience for the company's future for the product development team working on it will configure us various models in real time with integrated data. All that data they've been collecting off you, they're going to use to slip shoes. Oh, not that data. Sorry. No. Different data. Different data. No. Used to make the easier to navigate, I hope. It's those things, they got a lot of uh, menus. Yeah. It's like, I want to set the seat. You got to go into sub menu 47. Mm -hmm. Hold on. They were uh, so much yeah. more complicated, like that infamous uh, Mercedes Jezzer uh, thing in the old Top Gear. But in the older cars, when you had like, even in my TL, you have like a little screen like this, and it's like mm -hmm. seven sub menus. Oh, yeah. There's, there's menus and. It's still there. It's still a problem, but you know they're trying to work it out. You know, yeah. Lots of people are trying to work lots of things out. I mean, it's like figuring out menus is a big deal. It is. It's a big deal. It is. It is. Another big one. This is the next story. Buick says, "Hey, look at us. We're still here." Yeah. So uh, I, I picked you. this one. It's, we haven't talked about Buick in a while, but yeah, I like. Yeah. So how do you think it's going with Buick? This is a mid-cycle refresh. Doesn't sound good, does it? Mid-cycle yeah, refresh. It sounds like you just wanted Oof. to change one or two things, and look, we've added stuff. Please you know, buy a Buick. You bumped a couple features up in the trim I'm level. Sure you know, yeah, and I mean, it's just like, hey, look at us now! Like we, we we're complete. We're not done redesigning it yet, but this well, is your. Just buy this instead. No, I think it wasn't going very popular, very well, oh, and they're like, you way. know what? Like, oh. Why don't we try to refresh it a bit? Why don't we pause production and see if we could like give it an old shine, and that's what people will like. A little elbow grease in there, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not working. It's not There's working. It's three trim levels, preferred, sport, touring, and a Wiener. A Wiener Zane. 
Well, they could have Vitor Zane because it says standard all wheel drive, turbocharged two, turbocharged two liter I four LSY gasoline engine, rated at two hundred twenty eight horsepower and two hundred and fifty eight torques, nine speed automatic transmission. So that's driver. So some of the features that they are pointing out that they have, they have a driver adjustment. Outside rear mirrors and memory settings. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, you got them seat belts too. Heated Maybe steering a radio. <laughs> mm. Heated steering wheel. Heated front driver and passenger seats. Remote vehicle starter. That one's nice. Though. It is nice. Yeah. Dual zone air conditioning. That one's good too. That's yeah. nice too. Air quality indicator, which is probably required important by law. in some places, I guess. Like you know, like California, you probably want to know how the air quality is. Maybe not. Yeah. You know, especially in the valley. Uh, air recirculator and a universal home remote and hands-free power lift gate. Okay. Okay. Like maybe mid-cycle, it'll be very popular, but it's. I mean, it just sounds like, hey, we added this stuff it, in looking, here. Look, me. Looking at it, it doesn't excite me. I'm sorry, oh, Buick. Yeah, it's a Buick. Not, You're not old enough to be excited by a Buick yet. Yeah. You got to be at like AARP level to like uh, really get another, excited for a Buick. You know, another 20 years, I'll like Buick if they're still here. <laughs> but what is still here is this next story. I, I don't, I don't know how to feel about. I don't cover spy photos. I had the same thing. I had the same feeling. I don't know how to feel about this. It looks like, like it should be in an action movie. But I don't normally cover spy photos, but mm -hmm. Dodge released their own spy photos of the Charger Daytona. You know, you could promised. just release a picture of the car. You don't but have to. The, it's below, yeah. yeah. Okay. If you look down below is the spy photos that they released. That's the spy their own spy photos that they released. Are they really spy photos? Or is this just, just, this just promotional? Hey, Greg, get down there and take pictures with your phone. We're going to... No, no, no. We'll use a professional camera. But uh, we'll, let's call it spy photos. To get people excited. <laughs> Could uh, no actual information. They'll let us know later this month as to what's going on. Could start with about 455 horsepower. But with the 800 volt... Banshee uh, electric motor, it could surpass over 800. It's nice to see there's more competition for the Mustang. Who was the comedian? I think it was probably Tom Segura or somebody who was saying how their mom was trying to boost up their social media presence, but they, did, they didn't change, her mom didn't change like her name or profile picture oh yeah i can't remember this is kind of like that this is like dodge being like oh this is a spy photo but it still says like published by dodge you know like uh okay well we got a new dodge daytona coming yeah. out uh but it's good to know there's a nice new charger coming out and they haven't given up on that yet. i like this photo though because it's just like weird kind of paint and yeah, it's that, that they're peeling it off. Oh, okay. it's a secret. Okay, I, I was because I was just like, man, that's awesome. That's an awesome paint job. How they're just peeling, uh, oh, peeling off that. Oh, that makes sense. That it's going the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going yeah. the other way. Okay. All right, I'm on. The, I'm finally catching up. All right, like we could go the other way to this next story. <laughs> Americans, I think, are are seeing that it is, that's really hard. Let's mm -hmm. let's do hybrid. Over in Korea, Hyundai is moving forward on a new electric van. They got a new deal with the Iveco Group to supply an all-electric van based on its global LCVE, LCV platform. It'll be their first new electric van, part of a broader partnership in 2022. They announced a hydrogen powered bus platform that they worked on together mm -hmm. now they're going to work on this okay it's be a dedicated platform for commercial vehicles which is 
no. For 2.5 tons to three and a half tons. Oh, wow. Lower. That and that's space in to- inside. It's nice, especially for a van. Nice. This is the multi-ton Ooh. Uh, vehicle. Nice. Uh, one above is to be competition for the transit van. Very okay. popular for transit well, van. The transit van maybe. is the one you have to top because there's a bunch of those transit vans out there, They're like everywhere. Uh, the They're Nissan and uh, Xs. Mm-hmm. That's another popular one that is rivaling, but still not toppling. Just like the uh, the the uh, E series mm-hmm. uh, vans, you know, there's there's still out there, and there's it's a big market for vans. If you could find that niche, that's going to be that next way forward, and you get a nice van platform, mm-hmm. you really get ahead of the market right here. You really can, although they all kind of seem like they're all electric. Yeah, so we're all going <laughs> just electric for a platform. Yeah, I mean, Whatever if you works. get the good range. Then it could work, yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. A lot of options. It's like the options of this last one. Peugeot plans to use Chat GPT to improve its voice assistance in its cars and vans. Okay. This isn't the first time we've talked about that. Other companies are doing this as well, mm-hmm. but they. But Peugeot says we will introduce Chat GPT into all cars, including the new E3008 model. And in small commercial vehicles, Chat service, which will be able to connect vehicles, vehicle controls, and answer many general related questions in five countries. Uh, France, Britain, Germany, Italy, and Spain. Yeah, you can nail that French that French language. That's a big yeah. one. Mercedes already did this, and it was already in their cars. Uh, it, with the Mercedes one, you can even ask it where you're going. Where should we eat dinner? That's or, cool. And drive us there. Mm. And Volkswagen is also working with the chat. Have you running tried towards minority uh, have you, minority report? Have you tried to talk to the robot? I haven't. I haven't tried to talk to the I, robot. I, I did try. It wasn't helpful. No. At all. Mm. Generally, every time I've talked to it, it's it's not it's not there yet. It's not like Google. Yeah. Well, I mean, even Google was shit in the beginning. So you like know. if I really want to know like what inflation was, it's like I don't know. I'm not the government. Don't ask questions. Thanks. You're supposed to know stuff. Like what? I, I think that it, you give it a little bit of time talking to people, and uh, the the Chat GPT will uh, get better in ne- you know future updates. They just you got to wait for the the new drivers, and you got to download the new drivers. You know that's a that's a computer thing, right? You got to make sure your drivers are up to it. Okay, I guess. Well, if you want to update your drivers to all our internet. Make sure you hop on over here to facebook.com backslash lug nuts podcast. Spelt with a Z because Reggie. And that's where you're going to find all of our polished content coming out on the Purge Angers and Wall Hangers Media Network. Make sure you tune in to the Tales of the Hunted podcast. Uh, we're always having amazing guests on there as well as Lug Nuts Gaming. Somebody over here takes care of the games, take care of the cars. And, you know, until next time, it doesn't matter if you drive a Peugeot or a Renault. Because nothing rolls without lug nuts. We'll see you next week, gang. Until then, drop on! I know. Fred, Turn in your end credits, man. What's up? I mean, somebody has to. Go on a little bit. But, Doodle has a lot to say. Just like he wants you to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next week, we love you, we miss you, and we want you to keep driving on, lug nuts. Until then, bye-bye.
Drive on lug nuts. Hey, so we have should have everything queued up here <sighs> for another end credits. Still waiting on Drive to Survive. Oh, no, dude. Yeah. Zero a time wants you to go ahead and hit that like and comment below. Make sure to subscribe with that notification bell so you know when all the great Purge Hangers and Wall Hangers content is coming out to you there. And of course, until next time, drive on. Drive on, Lugnut.